Hello everybody, time now for my show, Strictly Football, nothing but college football. This is my final edition of Strictly Football for the 2015 season. We only have one more week of picking games, and of course most of the games we'll be picking will be conference championship games, and at least two of those games are going to have a huge impact on the college football playoff field in terms of its top four. Of course, don't forget that the college football playoff poll, the final one, will be Sunday, December the 6th. I think around 11 a.m. Oklahoma time, 12 p.m. on the East Coast, 9, of course, in the morning on the West Coast. But before we pick this week's games, again, there's not very many games to pick since we're in the first week of December. Let's go ahead and review last week's picks, which were an absolute disaster for yours truly. Worst week I've ever had easily. Of the 13 games that me and the Dime picked, I only won three, and the coin won six. Both of us had losing weeks, and in my case, a real, real bad week. Some of the games that I won, were, they might as well have been losses because I didn't get credit since that team did not cover the spread. So, a.k.a. Stanford against Notre Dame. Stanford didn't cover, so that's a loss right there for me. But anyway, I had way too many losses this past week, and the 3-10 and ten record is not only my worst week, but it also guarantees that I cannot finish this season with a winning record. Because my overall record entering the final week, 72 wins, 79 losses, and 7 ties. Just pathetic. The coin going 6-7 and seven made up a whole 3 games on me. So the coin's below 500 for the season, but at 70, 81, and 7, and only 2 games out, the coin could still catch me entering this final week of play. Okay, let's go ahead and begin all Saturday games. And before we pick five conference championship games, of course, the Big 12 still has two games to go. The Sooners, of course, um, have already clinched the Big 12 championship and are awaiting their playoff assignment. So let's talk about the two Big 12 games remaining, beginning in Waco, Texas at Baylor. And you can bet the Oklahoma State is going to be pulling for the Orange. And I don't mean pulling for themselves. They're going to be pulling for the Texas Longhorns. You see, if Texas can somehow find a way to win despite being 20-point underdogs, then it will be OSU and not Baylor that will be sole possession of second place in the Big 12 and will go to a major bowl game. That's the Sugar Bowl. If Baylor wins, then they win out on the three-way second-place tiebreak between they, the Cowboys, and the Horn Frogs, and Baylor would get a bid to the Sugar Bowl. So tomorrow's game in Waco is important, and I know that Baylor is still down to their third-string quarterback. Of course, no Seth Russell for the season, and no Jared Stidham. Doesn't matter. Baylor, way too talented, and Texas, I think, just waiting for the season to come to an end. They're 4-7. and seven. So give me Baylor minus the 20. If the dime, we're going to finish the year with the dime and not the nickel. If the dime lands on heads, it likes the favorite. Tails is going to go with uh, the underdog. And here we go. Coin is going to take Baylor as well. And finally, in the Big 12, West Virginia at Kansas State. Love the way that the Mountaineers are playing right now. K-State, they've got a win last week, but they played Kansas, okay? They, they played the Jayhawks. I mean, a lot of us could, could you know, beat the Jayhawks blindfolded. The game might be in Manhattan tomorrow between West Virginia and K-State, and it might be competitive for a while, but West Virginia will have way too much offense. Six and a half points I don't think will be enough. Give me the Mountaineers. Uh, minus a six and a half. And by the way, if West Virginia wins, you know, they'll close out the year pretty strong at eight and four. And you might be thinking, well, K-State needs this for bowl eligibility. Well, keep in mind that there are 40 bowl games. I think there's 40. And there's not enough teams. Um, it, it's projected there's not going to be enough teams, um, basically, to fill out the bowl field because you have to win at least six. K-State, if they lose, would finish five and seven. But still, because of football percentage index, might still get a bowl bid. West Virginia will still win the game. Give me the Mountaineers minus six and a half, and the coin will take West Virginia too. Now let's go to conference championship games. We'll begin with the AAC, the American Athletic Conference, which is not a major conference, but will play a major role tomorrow in the major bowl selection. You see, it's a group of five conference that AAC is, and right now they've got the two highest ranked teams amongst group of five participants, Temple at Houston with the Cougars favored by five. So the winner of this game figures to still be the highest ranked conference champion amongst the group of five conferences, the AAC, Conference USA, Sunbelt, MAC, as well as the Mountain West Conference. So Houston, their offense is playing too well. They're playing at home. Temple's had a nice year, but Houston will have too much O in this one. Give me the Cougars minus five to win the AAC and to probably go to the Peach Bowl against Florida State. 
and the coin it's going to agree once again it's going to take Houston and let's go to the West Coast Pac-12 where Stanford needs to win a probably impressive and that way if that happens then they can basically um, hope that Alabama or Clemson stumble in their conference style games and if one of those things happens then maybe Stanford will overtake Ohio State and get one of those four playoff spots. Stanford's still not out of it. Uh, USC, I was wrong about them. They played very well last week in a convincing win over UCLA to win the Pac-12 South. But Stanford is a whole other animal, and the Cardinals' offense right now is clicking. So give me the Cardinal minus four to win the Pac-12 and for at least a few hours remain alive in the discussion for the College Football Playoff. Cardinal minus four, and the coin is going to agree again. Coin and I are four for four on um, what side we're taking. It lacks Stanford, too. And let's go to the SEC, where nobody's giving Florida a chance against Bama. I'm certainly not. I mean, Florida's defense is not bad, and they've got a good running back in Taylor. Problem is, that's all they have. They have no passing game at all. And last week, they looked awful in their humiliating loss against Florida State, only scoring two points of safety. Bama will have too many answers in this game. Yeah, it might be a struggle for Bama in the beginning because Florida's defense, like I said, can play, but Bama's got too much depth and too much Derrick Henry. So give me Bama minus a 17 and to go to the playoff. And the coin, give it one good flip here. It is going to take, there we go, it's going to take Florida to, to at least cover the 17. Interesting. Two more games, the ACC, not the AAC, but the Atlantic Coast Conference Clemson, they've pretty much been the number one team the latter part of 2015. But they got a challenge in front of them. You know, the Larry Fedora squad, 10-1, you know, North Carolina, they've got a pretty good offense. This is going to be a high-scoring game, but, but you know, it's, it's going to be too much Taj Boyd in the end. That will Sweeney squad, I think, is one of those teams of destiny, at least to get to the playoff. What happens after that, who knows. But Clemson's undefeated, 12-0. And I do think they make a big statement. And a lot of people are thinking North Carolina is going to um, pull off an upset. Well, I think North Carolina will score points. I just don't see um, them stopping the uh, Tigers. By the way, if you want my opinion, which I'm sure you don't, do I think North Carolina, if they beat Clemson, should get a playoff bid? My answer is no, because they played two FCS opponents. And their only loss, granted was one loss, but it was to a South Carolina team that lost to the Citadel. So... North Carolina's got to start scheduling tougher. Give me the give me the Tigers, though, to win this game straight up and to uh, cover the five and a half, while the coin is going to also agree with me and take Clemson. And finally, the Big Ten. Might as well be an elimination game. Might as well be a quarterfinal, because the winner, with Iowa at four and Michigan State at five in the playoff poll, will win the Big Ten and, it looks like, go to the college football playoff. The loser... Well, they're out of playoff mix and will have to settle for still a pretty good bowl game, but not a playoff game this year, and that is the Rose Bowl. Iowa, they've answered the call every single week. Their defense has been impressive, and they're an opportunistic team, but they haven't seen a team like Michigan State. And the Spartans are making a statement in the month of November. No letdown last week after the win the prior week against defending national champion Ohio State with that thumping of Penn State. I think Michigan State keeps the ball rolling. So give me the Spartans to win the Big Ten and to capture a playoff spot. Michigan State minus the four. And the coin, for the last time this year, good flip, it's going to take Michigan State as well. So the coin and I, we disagreed only once. And seeing how that has happened, I have beaten the coin this season. I'm not really going to celebrate because unless I win all seven of these games, um, I'm going to finish the year below 500. So again, the coin and I only disagreed on the SEC Championship game where it liked Florida. And of course, I like Bama minus 17. A reminder for the results of how the coin and I did, um, I'm going to have a special show probably Sunday night. Um, it's going to be something to the degree of college football, um, you know, Final Four fever, okay? Because we're going to learn about where our Oklahoma Sooners um, are going to be playing, what seed they are, and who they're playing against. Of course, don't forget that the um, college football playoff, the semifinals, Orange Bowl and Cotton Bowl this year on New Year's Eve, and then early January, the National Championship at Glendale, Arizona. It would take an act of God for the Oklahoma Sooners, who are not playing tomorrow, to not participate in that Final Four. The three right now, they should remain there at the worst, be number four. Those are our picks. What were yours? And don't forget my bowl preview of the Big 12 um, coming up later in December. Thanks for watching, everybody.